Oh, All right. right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We had some serious issues there, uh, technically, but we are good to go. It is all sorted out. We're going to get back to it. You had way, you had way more than enough time to go and donate. So if you haven't already, you need to go donate. Um, uh, word on the street is 2% of all donations will now go to our audio. So that if that ever happens again, then we suddenly have no issues. We can, uh, we can get better audio for the future. Uh, but yeah, in all seriousness, we are back. We are getting ready to go again. We're checking with the players. We're heading into game two. Prepare your bodies. I just need to be made a referee in the, um, in the game. There we go. And here we are. Looks like both players are ready. So sorry about that, guys. Uh, we had some sound issues. Just a couple of programs that we're using uh, don't like each other. And once the sound crashes, it actually crashes XSplit as well. Everything goes poorly. And uh, it just took a little while for us to get back because there's so many wonderful people behind the scenes. Yes. And Doing their darndest to keep this going. Neil Planetus! Woo! Mr. Maxwell's Black, here we are in game two on one of my favorite maps, I must say, now on the pool. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of any of the maps that don't have a lot of view towers, if any, like this. If only because it actually, like I've always said, enforces the need to scout better and more frequently. I kind of wish that the tower thing wasn't even a thing. So do Starcraft I, too. because it's like an easy mode scout. Yeah, I mean, there is that element of, you know, it does take a bit of... Controlling the Yeah, towers. it takes some skill yeah. to control the towers yeah. and stuff like that, but, eh, you know, I could take it or leave it. Anyway, um, Mr. Nova War. What? Hit me up with the sound of our sound cutting out. Good evening, gentlemen. War. Noise. Starting up here in the top right position of Neo Planet S, we have Hendralisk. And bottom left, we have Ostagy. He totally owned last game. I don't know. If, I don't know if you guys could hear when it cut off the sound, but it was really, really impressive to see him move around between Nidus's. Um, and, and just force Hendrilis to do a base race, and one that he just could not win with that muted tech switch. It was beautifully done, um, and it was just pure dominance. I Absolutely. loved it. There I was, loved it. There was no hope. No. There was no hope. There was no hope of a sequel after that attack. I say that, of course, now we're here in game two, so I guess I kind of just contradicted myself. That's okay, though. I do that frequently. I do that frequently. Uh, it looks like, once again, both gentlemen, to the second, yeah. doing the exact same thing. Absolutely. They are both very comfortable with hatch. Uh, they're going hatch first here. Yep. Uh, once again, very comfortable doing so. Uh, I guess they are very certain that their opponent is not going to be super aggressive. So, whatever. It works, and it's worked twice in a row now. Uh, but I bet you that uh, I bet you that at least Hendrilis will be a little bit more uh, aggressive with his scouting to stay on top of what his opponent's doing this time. Uh, Hendrilis decided to go ahead and get an extractor first, and this is just going to let you know that he's going to get a hundred gas. He's going to pull these drones. Then he's going to get his uh, speed, his metabolic boost, yep. and he's going to try and uh, apply some pressure. And um, Ostoji is, is actually he got his um, his spawning pool after the hatch, but no gas. So we're going to see uh, some queens coming out from him and maybe a spine crawler as well to, uh, to try and hold. So I'm curious to see if uh, he's actually going to keep producing gas to go right into a Banelings or if he's just going to cut this right at 100. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I, well, I think it's, it's probably going to depend on how he feels. I think his overlord just got in there to see kind of what's going on. Uh, and, and however he feels about that is probably going to just determine whether or not he goes in right away. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be surprised if he didn't go in um, right out of the gate because he's not seeing anything uh, that tells him that Ostagy is going to be overly prepared for it. I would imagine that he's at least going to maybe try and poke around at the expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the very least, if he sends like maybe six links or whatever, at the very least he's going to get that extra scouting information which he desperately needs after that last game mm -hmm. going so poorly for him mm -hmm. due to that. So uh, one way or another, I'd be surprised if he didn't and waited for the Banelings, but you never know. Yep, It could also happen. Um, Hendrilis pulled uh, two of his drones uh, just so he can have enough to get that uh, Banelings nest. He's just going to leave one drone mining gas the whole time. And this will allow him to get some emergency Banelings if he needs to do that. 
Um, and also it's just nice to have gas to keep going as well, just depending on what kind of uh, switch you need to do. Uh, two more extractors going down here for Ostoji and uh, a spine crawler as well. So very, very typical stuff, just sort of what I thought he was going to do. But that metabolic boost is about to finish here for Hendralisk. Um, so he is going to have the speedlings, but uh, Ostoji is going to be ready for this with the spine crawler and a couple queens. Um, so once again, this is ZBZ. Welcome nothing, to it. There's, there's absolutely nothing uh, different coming no. from either of these players. No, no, and uh, it's understandably so. He's going to actually, look, he's attacking at something right down here right now for whatever he's, he's getting at. Oh, wow. What is a queen doing way the heck out there? And I think there might have even been another one at some point. Yeah, there was another one out there. What? I, I'm not sure what that was. I just assumed that that was an overlord. No, well, it's moving about as slow as one, right? Yeah, but yeah. I, when I started seeing the blinking up here in the top, and I thought, what is he attacking? He only has lings, and lo and behold, he just got two free queens. I don't know what he was planning on doing there. I actually have no clue what that was supposed to be. Okay, well. Well, Hendrix um, got more than he bargained, than he, uh, not more than he bargained for, more than he uh, probably thought he was going to get out of those right. He's probably like, whoa, He's free. probably giving himself a self high five right now. It doesn't seem like a whole lot, but I mean, that is a whole lot. That's 300 minerals. For the number of lings he just used to do that? Was, Absolutely. Yeah, no, that was a really nice pick off there for Hendrilis. I'm sure he was pleasantly surprised by that. Uh, we actually have a Roach Horn going down, so we're not going to see any Banelings, um, which is interesting. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, if I was Hendrilis and I picked off two Queens that quick, I might have actually tried to uh, do something more. Do something a little bit more, maybe uh, uh, put in a whole lot of aggression. But luckily, he didn't do that because there is a Roach Warren down for Ostoji. And of course, you know, Roaches are extremely good against uh, a Bailing. So uh, that was actually a, a nice decision by him. Uh, good thing I'm not playing. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty accurate. Yeah. No, I. Uh, yeah. But he's able to grab that third. Yeah, he is, uh, and this and that's probably a really smart move. Uh, I think that uh, I think that Hendrilis is is fairly confident. He is a really as you've played against him, he is actually a very good macro player, mm -hmm. uh, and so this is probably where he feels quite comfortable. He knows that his opponent is also probably going to go for it. You have to also uh, imagine what's going through Hendrilis' mind, having taken out two queens out in the middle of the field. You have to kind of imagine his, in his head. <laughs> Why did that just happen? Yeah, yeah. What does that even mean? Yeah, yeah, Double yeah. rainbow all the way across the sky. What does that mean? Um, you know what it means right now? It unfortunately, it means that the third just finished. The transfer happened, and he just lost a number of drones yeah. uh, to a run by there. And uh, it's not stopping anytime soon. That was actually a very nice time uh, there for Ostagy to get up there and do it. And you know he had to imagine that that's what he was going to do mm -hmm. after that uh, after that attack on his base. That was very Hendrilis. that was very well done. Uh, maybe maybe Hendrilis kind of got a little bit um, uh, overzealous there, and, or tried just tried to do a little bit too much too quickly. Didn't have enough to defend. Yeah. I guess uh, there really. And and there is another queen going Rambo over here. Okay, and I think I figured lose. it out. I think I figured it out. All right, I think I figured out why the queens are out here. Now just hear me out. I'm gonna hear At you. At this stage of the game, lings and roaches are the only things that's gonna be on the map in Banelings. This map has no towers. So Zerg is all overlords all over the map for vision. Uh -huh. So they are using the queens as a cheap disposal of the overlords to control vision on the map until they tear, uh, get up into the lair and have the ability to have air to do the same thing. I mean, maybe. Um... That's my theory. I, I guess aliens. Uh, I mean, this this queen right here, I can totally see that. But to lose two queens that early on in the game, I mean, that seems. Oh, well, it, he also had two more queens back at home, so it's not like he was using his first two queens. Yeah, I, I understand. I, I hey, you know what? Okay, maybe it's a trade I buy off. it. I buy it. Hey, I buy it. Hey, just seemed like uh, that queen I can totally see, but the first two, it is what it is. Maybe we'll ask him later on. But uh, we do have an engagement going on over this way here. Roaches versus roaches. Uh, what do we have for upgrades? We have one. plus one and one. So very, very even, except for the fact that Hendrilis is at the base of Ostagi. So uh, eventually he's going to get overran. Uh, so he's going to back off. But uh, Hendrilis still needs to, uh, or uh, sorry, Ostagi still needs to watch it here. There's a few more roaches uh, for, for Hendrilis. And now I think the number has went up a little bit for, uh, for Red Zerg down here in the bottom left. This is a fight to get a third right now, and here comes a run by from Hendrilis, and no, he's, he bails out there. He does not want to get caught and have these uh, roaches from behind uh, tear him a new one. 
And uh, really not a whole lot, just sort of roaches going all over the this place. Is, this is OCG and, yeah, OCG and Hendulis just positioning, just, just kind of posturing up at the thirds, trying to see who can maybe get a little bit of damage here and there. Uh, because right now they are basically building the same things. They have the upgrades are even within about five seconds to seven, ten seconds of each other. They're very much neck and neck. Mm -hmm. So all we're seeing right here is just them trying to get the extra little damage here and there. You can even see that the food count by both gentlemen are bang on for yeah. all intents and purposes. Yep. Uh, so really, all this is is let's see, you know, what small little things we can do that will build up over time to give us uh, that ultimate advantage. Uh, and uh, right now, that's just basically sending in a couple of units here and there to do some uh, some poking. And right now, yeah. really, Hangelisk, with a couple of roaches and a couple of links from before, has really worked that hatchery down next to nothing, and a, a quick little run-by from his main force could finish it up, but right now it's being chased away by Ostagy's army. Yeah, well, that was a nice little defend there. Almost lost the hatchery. That would have been a really awesome pickoff there for Hendulis. And like uh, Adam was saying there a little bit earlier, it's pretty much neck and neck uh, so far in this game. A little bit more of a supply lead for, uh, pardon me, for Hendrilisk. Uh, but for the most part, like Adam just said, this is a, a pretty damn even game. Uh, unit compositions are the exact same. We've got plus one and now plus two for Hendrilisk. So that's actually going to work uh, and in his favor. already working but on armor. Plus two is going to finish right about now here for Ostoji. So uh, things are going to be very, very even. And once again, we're on the uh, bottom left side of the map. So this is a very dangerous territory for Hendrilisk. And uh, Hendrilis has some roaches coming in from behind, and he's going to have to fall back here. And that was sort of a bad engagement for Hendrilis. He kind of, I think he over... Uh, Overestimated what he could do there. Exactly, yeah. Mm. I think he just went in a little bit too deep. Um, but nothing crazy. I mean, If this can, was a lag TV cast, that would have turned into a naughty joke, Mr. I was, Maximus Black. Trust me, I've already held back about three or four times in this cast just because... You know, I'm sure they don't care, but yep. I just this is a charity event, and I, I just trying to be keeping things, it clean. Some things you don't want to say. Just keeping it clean. Yeah, playing a game of just the tip of the joke. There you That's go. What we're doing. There you uh, go. Once again, just with the positioning, nobody really wanting to cross through the middle of this map at any point in time. It's kind of a death trap. Although I will say, Hendrilus has the uh, creep highway there with the overlords. Now this is something that Hendrilus does not want to do. Nope. This is this is the land before nope. But you know what? He doesn't really have a choice. I mean, where is he going to go? Is he going to let his roach horn die? And uh, One second while I reverse myself there and hope that the audio has cut out again because apparently that made no difference that he was completely <laughs> encompassed and he still won that entire battle. <laughs> For whatever reason, I don't know. Screw logic. Who cares about logic? Well, the, 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 the thing is, is whenever you're at the base, I've said this three times now, you can reinforce very, very quickly. And when you're up against an army that is basically the same army, if you even have, you know, ten more roaches, you're gonna, ten, win, ten you're, gonna, you're gonna win. You're gonna win. You're gonna win that battle, obviously. If unless you have ten more BCs. Well, that's the, well, that's the thing, right? That he can reinforce and 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 more, very much more quickly than what you know uh, Ostoji could reinforce at that time. And look, there's a hatchery right there, hatchery right here, hatchery right there. I mean, when you go and attack, you gotta make sure that you have the one up, or you can do damage and then back off, and that's exactly what Ostagi did there. So it was a, a fairly decent attack, but at the end of the day, we're still even. Now let's let's educate some of the viewers at home about uh, about ZVZs uh, because I'm I've noticed now. I know I'm not being distracted on those, so I'm reading the chat every now and then. I'm being very good today. I'm being very. I good. haven't looked at it once. I'm being very good today, but somebody is noticing the lack of creep spread. The reason why there's a lack of creep spread, except for the Zerg, kind of like the creep highways by overlords, is because you're just giving your opponent an advantage. So if you're the one to creep out into the middle of the map, mm. you're going to have the speed on both sides. So mm -hmm. it's more advantageous to just have it near your bases and leave it at that. Otherwise, you're giving the advantage to the other guy as well. And here we go, another face-to-face yep. -face, mm -hmm. uh, confrontation here. And it looks like Ostagy might actually be the victor for this one. Yeah, we have some Hydras in the back uh, dealing some sick DPS. And uh, like you were saying, Adam, about the creep spread, it really all depends on what your unit composition is. Yep. Like the last game, we noticed that the swarm hosts uh, need that creep spread to move back and forth very quickly. So yes, that's a thing. But uh, in this sort of case, it's sort of a mirror matchup. 
Um, but the, once again, we have a big battle going nice on here. There's a flank going on here, too. And it looks like Ostoji might get ran over here. He got some queens with some transfuse, and eventually he's going to have to back off. The supply lead is very even, and once again, he's going to be able to reinforce that army very, very quickly. I think we're in for a really long game, Adam. It's looking an awful lot like it, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're, they haven't backed off the roach composition at all. Uh, really, the closest thing we've got is Ostoji adding in a couple of hydralis. That's, mm -hmm. that's about the sum total of... Of, uh, the discrepancy here between these two players uh, and other than that it's roaches roaches and more roaches which even you've gone up against quite frequently because they are such a great unit uh, in general really easy to mass up on you kill them all and suddenly two seconds later the exact same number of roaches appear at your base yep. and do terrible terrible things to you uh, but really when you're in a, in a situation like this in the mirror matchup you have to be uh, Ooh, wary uh, of, uh, of changing like that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, these no, battles this is, this all comes down to positioning. positioning. That's yeah. what it all boils down to. And Ostoji has a really oh, good position, position here. And, uh, but we do have some more roaches coming. But once no. again, we got a couple of hydras in the background. Make and look difference. at this, more roaches coming as well. And Ostoji, once again, with that positioning, looks like he's going to take this battle, moving in a little bit closer so that the hydras and the roaches in the back can start attacking as well. And this is going to be extremely close, 124 supply to 132. And finally, Hendrilis is forced to move back. But once again, Hendrilis is just going to have more roaches here in just a second. And I don't think Ostoji is going to be able to move in uh, very far at all. And this is a really scary moment because you can't really just tech switch whenever you want to. No, if you tech switch saying, too no. quickly, then next thing you know, the roach is just going to overrun you. Yep. You're going to lose the game. Yep. So you really have to be careful on when you do your tech switch, and that's why we haven't really seen a big uh, switch from either oh, player okay, yet. There's a oh, pack of overlords whoa, there. Whoa, just out of nowhere. Shit the bed there. Whoa, whoa, Sorry. Whoa, yeah, good job. Good job. Look, a little bit of a run by here, and this is where you're going to start to see some of this stuff because after you've postured up, and this is actually another good place for Osta G. Yep. Once beautiful. again... Uh, oh, a couple of roaches are distracted from the back now as a couple of roaches pop out of, uh, of Hendralis as well. And he's going to have his attention split a bit here, but I think that once again with the Hydralis, the extra DPS yeah. that is needed, the drones are pulled off the line. Nice. I like that burrow there. The drones coming in, uh, taking some of that DPS while then the roaches pop back up to do some damage, but it's just not enough. And I think... Uh, Hendralisk at that point knew that the game was over. His attack down here in the bottom didn't, do didn't really do anything. Nope. And uh, that is all she wrote. In wow. A, in a game like that, really, when you're just going back and forth uh, uh, constantly and you're using the same units, a lot of it, like you said, it's it's pretty much all positioning. And when even when you do win, you just like you also said, you know, you, you sometimes you can't just go in because you're going to get overrun because of the reinforcements. Yeah, yeah. And so sometimes it's just a matter of positioning, winning the small battles, mm -hmm. and continuing to expand. And expand. Yep. Every time you win a, a small battle, throw down a base. Uh, get your units back up. And it's just like a, a battle of attrition. You're, you're absolutely right. And it's, it's one of those things, you nailed it on the head. Even though you win an engagement, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can win the war. You have to play very strategically. If you over, um, if you, if you over commit, it's it's a game of discipline, really. When when you when you think that you're going to be able to to do maybe kill a third or something like that, you really got to ask yourself, okay, um, if I go up here, am I then going to be flanked? How am I going to get out of this situation? And I really like the fact that Ostoji uh, never really uh, made any any bad decisions that time. He knew when to go in. He knew when to attack. He always had the high ground vision. Uh, it was just really well played. Absolutely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again. This is the Bell Alliant Fiber Op Gaming League Summer Cup brought to you by, of course, Bell Alliant with the help of Frag for Charity. And we've got that sponsorship help with some sweet gear from the one, the only, Cooler Master. We'll be right back. We're going to have a quick commercial break, and then we're going to continue with yet another Game 3. Stay tuned.